بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم والصلاة والسلام على أشرف المرسلين سيدنا وحبيبنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين Dear colleague, today we are uh, going to uh, start a series of uh, talks about practical issues in research and academic writing. This series will uh, compose uh, three sessions and the main uh, target and the aim of this series is to clarify the most important practical issues while conducting the research. So uh, throughout our talks, which will be in the three sessions, we are going to focus on the practical issues while conducting uh, the research and where are the most common mistakes which might happen and as well what are the most important academic standards uh, while conducting the work either in the academic writing or conducting the process of the research itself. The first slide, uh, we should start with some key points regarding the uh, research process in general and academic writing. It is important to identify what is the type of the task you do perform. It's quite essential. We do mean by that we should identify by ourselves first, are we conducting, for example, case study uh, writing re uh, task or we are uh, writing a thesis, or we are writing a journal article, or we are writing a, a lab report, because all of these are academic written tasks. So we should identify what sort of task we are performing. The differences between the academic written tasks creates the differences in the depth of the information that should be inserted within the task. As there is a decrease in the size of the text, there is an increase in the narrowing and focusing need. For example, if we are taking a case report, it's completely different in its size from the project thesis, either for a graduate or for a postgraduate. As we know in the thesis, for example, for a graduate student, we will have lots of pages which might reach up to 60 pages or 55 pages, but in the case report, we do have just the three pages. Three pages in case report, it doesn't mean that the information within these pages should be superficial. No, as there is a decrease in the size of the text, there is an increase in the depth of the information, there is an increase in the focusing, and there is an increase in the narrowing of the topic, which means more straightforward, more focusing, more depth in the information. And this is a very big, high challenge, to be honest, in the academic written tasks. To make a research more effective and less time consuming, you can do three things. First of all, you need to plan your research before you start. And this plan should be, firstly, by the mind, then you translate all of what you have planned on the mind into the papers as a map to make it workable. Secondly, you need to make your research schedule, or schedule to make a time frame for your work. Thirdly, you start to prepare your source of information to start the research process. And I'm focusing on the research process there because the research is a process, which is, means a dynamic process. And when we talk about a process, we do mean by that there are some steps should be pre-requested before moving to another steps and some steps can go in parallel to each other. In Arabic language, when we talk about research, we are talking about a process. And when we talk about the term of the process, we do mean by that, in the process, there are some steps should precede other steps. Or if we do uh, have some steps, that should go, or might go, sorry, parallel to each other. First thing in the research process is the determination of the topic. For example, if we do take this practice slide, discuss the issues facing students new to the university. So what is the instruction word here? The instruction word here is discuss. And discuss is a term that's different from describe, for example. 
So the instruction word should be understandable, should be quite understandable and should be workable as well while you do start your writing work. Then discussion is completely different from the description. So here in this topic we do need a discussion. Discussion of what? Bringing multiple point of views about what? What is here the topic? Is it the issues facing students at the university or facing students new to the university? It's clear from the slide here that it is issues facing students new to the university. So the topic here, the problems or the issues facing new students coming to the university. So the third question here, how you are going to conduct the process of the writing. Here you need to make a mind map first. First of all, you need to look at the instruction of the task that is given by the supervisor or the institute or the tutor. For example, if they do need this task in thousand words, so you need to make a mind map for this thousand words to cover this topic. So how you are going to start? You need to start by general introduction, for example, about the university and how it does differ from the Pre, uh, secondary school and preparatory school, for example, then you need to go in another uh, paragraph to talk about the problems facing students in general in the university and you do need to end this paragraph by statements which is focusing on the new students. Then you are going to cover the problems facing the new students in specific because this is the main topic by using the funnel shape which is coming from the general idea and as you go down there is more narrowing and focusing to the topic you can write this topic and dividing the percentages of the talk so facing new students because it is the topic problems facing the new students will take nearly 90 percent of your academic uh, space, academic writing space, because this is the topic, while the other 10 person, for example, is the introductory for that. So this is an example of uh, knowing the topic, determining the topic, and how to write it, and you don't jump uh, directly, and you shouldn't jump directly to make the writing before making a mind map for the information that you are going to insert. Another practice which gives you uh, an example uh, about the topic uh, issue or what is the topic that you are going to write about or work on. The dramatic increase in the students number in higher education has means the teachers have had to change their teaching method and develop new ones. Consider the implications for, of these for the students. So what is the topic here? Some people might say that the topic is the increase in the number in the student in the higher education. For those, I'm going to say you are totally wrong because you are not correct. Because the topic is changing the teaching method as a result of the increase in the number of the students. So determination of the topic is quite, quite important. Understanding the topic creates a good idea in your mind to start work on either to manage the method or preparing the method of the work if it is a field research work and then start writing about because based on the topic you are going to collect the information and you are going to divide this information to quite relevant information and side information which touches the topic and we should insert it in our writing tasks. Now starting with something or coming to the something which is important, what is the research statement? Research statement, it is the statement or it is the most important sentence in the work. It is the statement which covers the topic, which answers the question about the topic, what does your paper say? Your answer would be this thesis statement or research statement or paper statement. 
A good research statement should include three main things. First of all, the main idea of the work, the background of the work, and how is the work is being presented before and, and in the recent time, and why we are picking this work, and where is the problem of this work, and in another words, what is the significance of the work, what is the value of doing this work, and then we should include in our research statement what are the aim and the objective of the work, which we can summarize it in the term of purpose of the work. So, in between, we should include as well the research question or the hypothesis or both of them, the research question and the hypothesis of the work. So, main idea of the work, the problem of the work including the research question and the hypothesis and the purpose of the work. What are the criteria to evaluate the research problem? Research problem it should be researchable and important and it should indicate the type of the research and should specify the type of the population and should specify the variables that we are evaluating and the problem it should be clear. As well, the research problem that we are going to work on, it should be measurable, it should be feasible as well. You shouldn't bring some uh, thing that we couldn't measure, we couldn't work on, we couldn't evaluate that much. Now, we have a space to talk about a research question and the hypothesis. What is the research question and what is the hypothesis? Once you have a specific topic for your paper, the topic should be transferred to a research question or the hypothesis. So a research question to be answered or a hypothesis to be tested. What are the criteria that should be considered for a research question? in particular of the hypothesis. Let me focus on the research question now. Research question should be important, relevant, interesting. And we do mean here by interesting is valuable, is significant. So the research question or questions some research might have few of research questions. It shouldn't be one research. It might be various research questions. It should be important should be relevant to the topic and it should be interesting which means significant and valuable. Question should be simple and sufficiently specific to be answered and the question should be as well measurable and feasible to be worked out. Make it clear to what extent the research question had been addressed by previous people. This is quite important. The research question it should come from your literature scan for the, for the work by making a scan for the previous literature and see how extent this question has been evaluated before, how this question has been addressed before, and where are the gaps. Research question in general, it might be comes from the recommendation for the previous literature, it might be come from your reading and critical evaluation of the papers, and it might come as a question hasn't been answered from the previous paper and there is a recommendation to work it out, or it might be come from the conflicting issues that comes from the papers and there is no quite clear decision about this issue. Research question should be stated clearly and it should be as well linked to the background on the problem of the uh, research and as well linked on the other side with the aims and the objectives. These are some criteria of good research question. It should contain one central question but it may have some sub-questions related to the central one. It should be clear, it should be concise and accurate, it should be feasible, it should be evocative and interesting, researchable, and it's a framed for original contribution with the problem that we are raising, and it's relevant with the research problem. This is quite important, and should have connections with theories and concepts, and 
it might be acceptable to have more than one question which connected with each other and achieving the same aim or hoping to achieve the same aim and objectives. This is an example of some research ideas with the question. For example, we do have an idea here, the sponsorship for the City Foot Club. We do have here general focus research question, what the benefit do the commercial organization derive from their sponsorship? For example, here, the adoption of uh, by uh, manufacturing companies, uh, flexible workforce, the question here, will do manufacturing companies divide their workforce into core and peripheral workers? So we do have an idea of the work and we do have, for example, the general research question. Let me more specific here in terms of the science. We do have a topic here about women's health. We do have more narrowing idea about the topic women and cancer. And our focus in this topic about women smoker and breast cancer. So the research question which link it to the focus topic, which comes from the pro topic and more narrow topic, is the cigarette smoking associated with the breast cancer. It is here, for example, the computer games, computer game violence, the topic which we are working on computer game violence and children. So the question should be relevant to the focus topic. How does violence computer game affect children? So as you can see, research question should be highly, quite relevant to the research problem and the research idea. Here, another examples of some research question, how much fast food do Americans consume per week? How often do students between age 15 and 18 use Facebook each week? So research a question using the tools of the question, how, why, which, when, what, these are the tools of the questions. What are the steps in the research process? First of all, we should know what we are planning to conduct. Are we planning journal article, case study, project work, thesis? Then we should make a literature search and identify the topic or the topic's problem. Then we should translate this uh, uh, topic problem to problem statement. Then create the topic research question or the hypothesis or both. At our level at the university, for example, I'm talking about the students, we are satisfied by a research question. Then we need to make an extensive review of literature after making all of that to develop now an objectives, which we do mean the general aim and the certain objectives of our work. After that, we can determine our study population who are going to be involved as inclusion and who are going to be not involved as exclusion criteria. For example, if we are conducting a work to uh, find prevalence of the diabetes among obese people, our population here is an obese people because we are searching for the diabetes in this population. So the inclusion criteria is an overweight and obese people based on the body mass index categories. Okay, this is a completely different from another research, which is a prevalence of obesity among diabetic population. In this research, our population is the diabetic people, and we are searching for overweight and obese people using the body mass index categories in the diabetic population. So the problem of the research and consequently, the research statement and subsequently, the research question will determine in precise what is the study population inclusion and what is the study population exclusion criteria. We should consider the ethical issue as well, which is an important part in the research process and the ethical issues is related to the researcher and related to the participant and we are going to take that in details later on. 
determine the sources of the data collection, determine the methods and the tools for data collection, and make a plan for the data collection and its further steps, analyze the data and make a presentation of the results, then discuss the results, and after making the discussion, finalize the writing of your project, then submit the thesis after the review of your writing. Now, we are going to start with an academic writing. Academic writing, collected information should serve the purpose of the task. In academic writing, it is not good to state something without evidence. And this is what we call within the text the citation. So this is what we call in the text is the citation. So our question here, what is the citation or define the citation and what are the other types? I'm going to give some general considerations or general principles that should be considered in the academic writing. It shouldn't be eight, to be honest. It might be more because, but these are the eight general considerations or principles in the academic writing. First of all, academic writing should be in a clear purpose. It should be persuasive, analytical, and informative. Secondly, it should be in sequence and bring us the reader engagement. So it should be in a flow with the fluent and in sequence. And it should have a clear point of view. It shouldn't be vague. It shouldn't be making a disturbance in the mind of the reader. So it should be straightforward, concise, precise, and very clear to the reader and going in a sequence and a fluency. It should be focus and logical organization. So there should be a logical organization. So there is no jumping in the academic writing. So it should go in sequence like a story. And there should be a strong support and effective use of the literature, which we do mean by that the citation, the use of the citation. And it should be clear and complete explanation where there is a need for the explanation, particularly in the chapter of the discussion. If we talk about the review of the literature chapter, review of the literature chapter is a descriptive chapter. It's not a discussive chapter. While the discussive chapter is the chapter of the explanation or the chapter of the reasoning, and we are going to talk about that. Layout, you should consider that. It shouldn't be that messy. It shouldn't be difference in the size of the lines in the fonts, unless the difference in the font in between the titles and the subtitles and the text. But it should be all similar. They can always the titles, all the titles should be within 16. A text, it can all of the text should be in 12. It can the Times in New Romans, but all the text should be in the Times in New Romans, including the titles and the subtitles. So the layout and the alignment in both sides, and we will see that in practice. Grammar, it should be reviewed. It should be reviewed. We are not that native speakers, but we should write in a correct English language. And there should be a proofreading from some experts who can correct your grammar and as well the structure. And follow the instruction on the guideline of the instructor of the institute. Any institute should have, should have a guideline for the research or an academic writing in general. And these instructions should be followed and should be reviewed between the tutors, supervisors, and the candidate. In academic writing, follow the principles of the funnel shape, going from the general to more narrower and specific. In the funnel shape, as you go down, as you go more deep, focused, and concentrated. And this is, for example, a funnel shape for introduction. For example, we are presenting the topic in a general, going for more narrower, more focusing, then we are putting the research question, then here the aims of our work. So what 
makes academic writing is unique or distinguished from other forms of the writing. I'm not going to have these details, I will leave that for you, but objectivity, criticality, formal English, clear focus, effective structure are basic principles and characters that distinguish academic writing from other forms of writing. Let us talk about writing style. Writing style, say, as we said, we should focus on the structure and the layout. We shouldn't forget page numbering. We should be careful about the organization of the chapters and the sections and reflect the global structure of the text. If we are using headings and subheadings and sub subheadings, we should be careful and we should organize them in a very well manner without jumping and making a sequence in the information that will make it flow in a smooth way and engage the reader while you are making the reading. And we are going to take that in details later on. Arrangement, which makes the syntax, grammar as we said, composition, sentence structure, which reflected the grammar in one way and as well the sequence of the information is important word order language rule and using of the linking word i'm going to focus a little bit on the linking word later on because it is the greater weapon on the academic writing use of the words dynamic precise clear should be clear should be simple, not that complicated, and makes your text more comprehensible and readable. And avoid any informal or spoken language in the scientific texts. Using some key words, this is important, particularly in paragraphs in which you define or identify an important idea or theory, and be consistent in how you refer to it. What is the tenses? This is important. I'm not going to spend that much time, but it is important to know that the accurate use of the tenses is quite important, to be honest, in the academic writing. We do have a simple present, for example. It is general use to describe the action that occurs now or on a regular basis. A past tense, it is indicating that job has been done. So emphasize the completed nature of the past activity or the event. For example, past tense, we are using it in the, our research in the method chapter. We are not using present perfect or simple present in the method chapter. Present perfect is used to describe unfinished action that started in the past and continue to the present. It is used as limited to the introduction Literature review to indicate that the research area is still continuing or still has immediate relevance. Passive voice is another figure, emphasize what was done and is generally conceived to be more objective. It seems to be more scientific and it's also considered to be impersonal, wordy and often pouring. The paragraph, which is a smaller unit of the text, which is a structure of the text, topic of the paragraph becomes manifested uh, in the first or last sentence of the paragraph. وبالتالي, a sentence اللي نبدأ بها paragraph, it's called a topic sentence. يعني, say for example, I'm going to talk, physical activity has lots of benefits on various systems of the body. Full stop. From the beginning, any reader حيقرا هذه الستيتمنت حيعرف ان باقي الباراجراف is talking about the health benefits of the physical activity on the various system and I'm expecting as a reader انك تحكي لي على البنفيتس on the cardiovascular example system on the respiratory system on musculoskeletal system for example same as we say for example nutrition is important in adolescents or healthy nutrition is important for adolescents. Full stop. So I'm expecting that the rest of the paragraph 
by this opening statement حتحكي كلها على الامبورتنت اوف ذا نيوتريشن ان ادوليسنت جروب ان بارتيكولار نوت ذا بينيفيتس اوف ذا نيوتريشن ان جنرال ولكن وي ار توكينج اباوت النيوتريشن ان ذا ادوليسنت جروب to establish a coherence with the paragraph make sure that each sentence is related to the topic sentence that's what i said في السلايد اللي قبلها ان الباراجراف should be connected to each other should be coherent it should tell a story it should tell a story and this is can be achieved by repeating keywords or phrases or using parallel structures or linking words again our focus our concern will be about the linking words let us see this example of paragraphs as you can see here there is no titles there is no headings so the text in the same size in all paragraphs as well the alignment here is equal so there is no bad layout of these paragraphs and as you can see there is no differences in between the type of the text مثلاً مش Times New Romans تلقى فيها Times New Romans area no it is similar in all of the paragraphs and as well there is no headings or subheadings here or titles for example if we do have here a title so it should be in a different font different size it is completely different from this slide as you can see here there is no alignment okay and this brings a bad vision for the reader which means is a not correct or a not good layout now the core of our talk today what are the standards component of any written task and organize the parts of the written project work if i'm giving you that slide or this slide and asking you to organize these chapters these chapters are written here in non ordered way can you order them based on the submission task انا ما نحكيش على الاوردر هنا في الورك انا نحكي على الاوردر لما خلاص انت خلصت الشغل خلصت شغل البحث وجاي بتدير بايندنج وجاي بتسلم البحث بتاعك make an order for that so from where you are going to start if i'm going to give it as a homework i will leave you to think and stop the video at the moment if you don't need to take it as a homework or you make a try with yourself about i'm going to give you an answer first of all we should start by something which is called here title page so the title page is the first secondly we are going to an abstract because the abstract should be the first page that the reader should read then we are going to have the list of contents list of figures and we do have here list of tables then we will go for abbreviations which means what are the glossary that we are using and it should be inserted at the beginning it shouldn't be at the end introduce the reader for your uh, research then we will go for uh, introduction after introduction having a review of literature then method results and after the results we should go with discussion I don't know where it is then after the discu discussion then we will have references and sorry before the discussion or at the end of the discussion we do have here limitation then conclusion then references then appendices so this is an order while we do finish the work the question now is it the same order while we are going to doing the work we will see so all reports have a number of commonly recognized component and divided to three major categories beginning middle end what are the components and the elements of each of each 
So the beginning we do have title page, summary or the abstract, acknowledgement, contents in general, list of contents, list of table, list of figures, glossary or abbreviation and introduction. The middle, what we do have, we do have review of literature, methods, results, discussion. And here, this is the main body of the thesis which we can write it in the way of headings and subheadings and sub subheadings structure. So it is acceptable in all of these to use headings, subheadings and sub subheadings. The end, we do have limitation, conclusion, recommendations, references, bibliography and appendices. I've asked the question and this is an answer. Is the previous slides which we did talk about and we did say that this is for the submission. The order of that is similar to the order of the work? No. The order of the steps while working in the project shouldn't be similar to the order of the chapter for the binding of the thesis for its submission. So questions raised now what is the first chapter to be read but the last chapter to be written. Again, what is the first chapter to be written? So what is the first chapter to be read but the last chapter to be written? I'm going to give you an answer now. The first chapter to be read is an introduction. But we should leave the introduction to the last step. The reason why, because while you start the work of the research, you don't have that much good bulk of knowledge to introduce your topic. But after ending the work, you do have that much knowledge. However, you shouldn't touch the results of the work and you shouldn't discuss anything from the field work that you have conducted. In the introduction, you just introduce the theory of the topic. You should introduce only what? The problem statement, the point of views regarding the topic that have been explored in the previous research, and you should show the significance of the topic, and you should explore the aims and the objectives of your work based on the research question or questions that you have created. So, at that time, at the end, you have that much knowledge to write that in a perfect way. So, what is the first chapter to be written? The answer is review of literature. And the review of literature is a golden chapter. It's the golden chapter that you have start with and it is continuous up to the last minute. And the review of literature, I name it, is the punk chapter. Who will punk of information? And this bank, you are going to use all of the information in the review, either in introduction or in the discussion. Now, define plagiarism, quotation, rephrase, citation. Plagiarism, using someone's text without acknowledgement. So, you can use something that you wrote بدون ما تشير إلى أن هذا من اقتباس أو أنك أنت خديته وليس اقتباس أنك أنت خدت من ورقة كتبها شخص تاني وبدون ما تشير إلى هذا الشخص وبدون ما تدير تغيير فيها by your own word so whether you meant to do it or not for student plagiarism means failing a grade to avoid plagiarism you should write the statements in your own words and refer adequately to the literature and don't copy entire paraphrase from existing text. This is, for example, original text, and this is a plagiarized version. Why it's a plagiarized? Because the student hasn't copied the text word to word, but there, and there is citation, but the translation is too close to the original. There is not that much change, to be honest, in the original plagiarized version okay so i'll leave that for seconds to see it in a well way al iqtibas quotation is the repetition of one expression as part of another 
particularly when the coated expression is well known. And we should put quotation mark for the statement that we have made a quotation. This is an example. This is original text and of two ways to become wealthy, creating wealth adds to the society, whereas taking from here, from typically subtracts, which here, if we go to the original text, we will find it, okay? It has been taken from the original text, but has been marked by the quotation mark, and we should indicate from where we did take it, and we should indicate as well if it's from the book, what is the page number of the book that we have taken it. So if you revise the original text here, you will find the statement has been taken, quoted as it is, but we did know that it is a quotation from the quotation mark that have been inserted. Rephrase, simply, in your own words, in different way, clearer way, but in your own words, without changing the meaning, without changing the target of the statement. For example, well, I know that in the book, in the journal, physical activity increase. Our uh, studies have shown that physical activity increasing the physical uh, vagal tone. Full stop. Rephrase, نقدر نقول إنه vagal activity or vagal tone has been illustrated in different literature that has increased by continuous or regular participation in physical activity. So it's a changing in the your own words, but without losing of the meaning, without losing of the target of the sentence. This is, for example, original text. Students frequently overuse direct quotation when taking notes, and as a result, they overuse quotation in the final research paper. Okay, probably only about kada kada. The same thing here has been stated by in different way in research paper students often quote excessively, failing to keep quoted material down to the desirable level. So it is using of the same statement in another way. So we do have in this session just two slides more. Uh, we have asked about the citation, lean stakhdama of text. What is the citation? We do have two types of the citation. We do have Vancouver and Harvard. Harvard, the previous studies, for example, this is a statement within the text, showed that there is no effect of exercise on the mental stress response. So we use in the Harvard the names Gladwell, for example, Ital, which means a group of the researcher. And this is the date of the publication, and this is just one researcher, Al Ammari, and this is the date of the publication. And here in Harvard, we are using the name of the author. Vancouver, the same statement, but we are using the numbers. Okay. Going back to Harvard, if we are using Harvard as a type of the citation in the reference list, we are going to order the reference list based on alphabetic. Based on alphabetic. In Vancouver, if we are using a Vancouver, which means the using of the number inside, we are referencing or listing the reference based on the appearance of the number. For example, if number one, as you can see here, number one is it Gladwell, and number two here is Alamari. Even A, is preceded G in the reference list in the Harvard, here in the Vancouver, no. In the Vancouver, Gladwell will come the first and Alamari will come the second. So this is the difference between Vancouver and uh, Harvard, which are the traditional citation methods. We do have lots of packages online such as EndNote, Reference Manager, and others. And these are uh, some uh, more modern uh, technical way that you can take some courses on and you can use, which was of quite benefit. But traditionally and classically, we do have 
Harvard, Vancouver, which any researcher should learn that before moving to the other technical uh, packages. Thank you very much for your uh, interest uh, joining and hope that you have enjoyed the first session of our series of talk and meet you on the second one, inshallah. Assalamu alaikum. Thank you.